Okay guys, today we are going to be talking about knives that I think are pretty well suited for the end of the world, or an apocalypse, whatever you'd like to call it. As always, before we get into it, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and the Instagram to see more behind the scenes. Now if you'd like, as always, the support is very, very appreciated. Okay, now let's talk about some apocalyptic blades. <laughs> okay, so the first one on the list is going to be the Strider SNG. Now this one is tiger striped, and I don't necessarily think that the Strider SNG is maybe the best apocalypse blade. Like, it's not the strongest folder. It's certainly not weak, but, you know, it, it leaves some to be desired, and other blades here are a little bit more up to snuff. I just honestly think taking two looks at this blade and uh, several of these other blades, it just fits with the kind of motif of apocalypse it looks very end of the world with the way that it's stylized and how it's kind of uh, camouflaged in and of itself so i just think it's a great blade for looking the part of the apocalypse and i'm sure it would be just fine it certainly wouldn't be a bad knife for the end of the world Okay, now jumping up in size just a little bit is a knife that would probably be a little bit better suited, and that is the Benchmade 2750 Auto Adamus. Now, like I said, this is an automatic knife. It is the Auto Adamus, and it just kicks out, fires hard, and is a pretty awesome folding blade. If I had to take a folder into the world, into the world, this would probably be very high on my list. Not only because you can get a full grip with it in both reverse and normal uh, handling, it is just a really all around pretty good pretty robust and durable blade not to mention when you factor in the automatic part of this knife you get a really snappy very hard deployment so it's kind of hard to uh, beat that if you're looking for a folder you know something like a secondary you can just whip out really quick and you know have in case you need it for whatever okay now let's finish off with the last right and proper folder and you know this had to be on the list uh, because it is a big beefy tank of a folder and uh, this is the gold steel 4 max scout now granted cold steel does make bigger knives but i think uh, within reason this is probably one of the more tanky uh, folding knives you can get from them and uh, it really is it is just a folding tank of a blade and uh, to give you some reference the last knife we just talked about this is the auto adamus which is by no means a small folder and you can see that the uh, the 4 max is definitely a little bit bigger now it isn't actually too much longer of a blade but where it really comes into effect is the thickness on these two uh, the 4 max is just much thicker much beefier it's also much wider than something like the adamus i think the adamus is you know a pretty pretty generic large folding blade and so uh you know when you factor something like this monster into it uh yeah this thing is crazy but it is really cool and once again you know if you're taking something into the end of the world this is not a bad option and uh once again with that triad lock it is insanely tough and uh, I'm going to be doing some videos here in the future really showing this thing off. But I thought, since I just got it, it's definitely a really tough knife. Can't wait to really show its, uh, show its merits. So now let's talk about a pretty practical option. The previous ones were a little bit... Uh, a little bit flashy, but it, probably the most realistic apocalypse folder slash multi-tool would honestly be a Leatherman Surge. Now, this is a Generation 1 Leatherman Surge, but either the Gen 2 or the Gen 1 are going to be just fine options. Very large, very sturdy plier head on this uh, tool. And of course, you have a great selection of realistic tools, things like your utility blade that's fully uh, serrated. You have your plain blade, you have your saw, you have your scissors, you know, just very practical tool that's going to be very realistic and very useful in many different ways, in all honesty. Like I said, the other knives were kind of uh, more geared towards self-defense this is probably the most practical up on the list of course when you throw it in a sheath you can have a bit kit with it and all that fun jazz so okay that is kind of rounds out the multi so that kind of rounds out the multi-tools and folders of my list for apocalypse blades now let's talk about some fixed blades 
Okay, let's start off with the smallest and the lightest duty, and that is probably going to be the Gerber Prodigy. Now, I will say I'm usually not a fan of Gerber tools, but the Prodigy is pretty good, I think, for an Apocalypse Blade. It is something that you could really thrash on and beat the heck out of, and it is still going to be fantastic and work for you well. Ultimately, it's pretty comfortable uh, being a scaled-down version of the LMF2, and I think it's actually an improvement as far as ergonomics go in many ways from the LMF. But overall, this is the Prodigy and this one is in the combo edge as probably most apocalyptic people would have it because of apocalypse but uh, overall whether you go with the plain edge or the combo edge it really doesn't matter it's still gonna be a pretty solid pretty tanky blade and I think that honestly you'd be able to beat the heck out of it pretty well and uh, it would do just fine okay stepping up from there this is one that once again might not be the most practical tool but definitely screams apocalypse and I feel like tops could actually fit this and many different many different knives that they have even the things like the toma field knife or the armageddon would really fit this quite well but for example i have the tops tom brown tracker and i think that the tracker is not only a pretty good survival blade but would make a really neat very interesting apocalypse blade uh it wouldn't necessarily be the best for self-defense unless you count intimidation because i do think if you whip this out on someone who is trying to attack you it'd be very intimidating but say in a zombie apocalypse it could work in a pinch as a kind of cleaver or makeshift cleaver quite well and lastly i really just think that the tracker kind of fits the uh idea or concept of apocalypses we usually think of them as kind of you know dystopian and futuristic and kind of s not quite subhuman but you know in a different world like an alternate reality so i think something like the tracker fits that pretty well lastly we'll finish with a handful of pretty practical blades and the first of those is going to be the sc6 regardless to whether you are in an alternate universe or in this universe or apocalypse or not the sc6 is really just a fantastic blade that is very well versed for literally everything i mean i feel like you couldn't take this into any situation whether it be survival bushcrafting outdoors in general that this won't excel at you everything from skinning game animals to gathering resources and even defending yourself while it would not be the easiest blade to use it certainly would not be the worst for sure so i think the sc6 has to be on this list just because it's such a good multi-roll knife and i really do talk about it a lot as a good multi-roll knife and this is another role that it would be good at. <laughs> okay, stepping up in size is the SC Hooglis 2. Now, I was thinking about adding the RTAC as well, or the RTAC 2 to this list, but I think that the Hooglis is pretty much the same thing, and the Hooglis 2 is just a slightly smaller version of that, and I think that the Hooglis would be a pretty good, or Hooglis 2 would be a pretty good apocalypse blade, especially if you consider, you know, the intimidation factor and self-defense. You have quite a bit of reach here, it's not going to be the best in a reverse grip you could manage it probably but realistically kind of fills the void of like a large buoy knife and uh, would definitely be good for material acquisition probably not the best at uh, doing things like bushcrafting or smaller more fine-tuned tasks but overall the Hooglis 2 would be a pretty cool blade and I think would serve you as an apocalyptic survivor quite well not to mention it is super comfy to hold and uh, to use okay last one up on the list and the largest on the list is going to be the dpx heft chop 12 and i think there has to be a machete on the list naturally and so this was the machete that i wanted to choose or at least a very large knife some people don't really call parangs machetes i guess i don't know but uh, for me it's basically a machete because of its size its weight its heft and its uh kind of intended use and so for me i think it's a pretty good resource uh, gathering tool i don't really think machetes especially ones that are either parangs or styled after parangs like this one is kind of it's not really a parang but it's styled after a parang and so effectively its use case is about what you'd use a parang for but uh, ultimately i think it would be very good for material acquisition and material gathering either blazing trails collecting firewood um, building structures of course within reason you're not necessarily going to be felling large logs with this but if you need to build uh, field expedient shelters for scouting operations or for uh, different types of purposes whatever you need them for uh, i think that a, having a solid machete with some good heft to it and a nice thick stout back that uh, will be 
able to cut through larger, heavier uh, pieces of wood and brush will be very helpful at least, and maybe even necessary at best. So anyways, this is, like I said, the one that I would choose. I really like the DPX Heft 12 because it's a solid slab of nylock steel made by Lion Steel in Italy. And I think it's just kind of cool that this is like an Italian machete, kind of crazy. You'd never really think of the Italians making a machete, but sure enough, this is it. And uh, they did. And so I think that's a pretty cool uh, fact and definitely really like it. It's definitely also a very unique design with the uh, kind of multi-grind at the front to help with chop and with weight it's also you know got a pretty good uh, weight overall and is pretty usable back at the uh, back of the handle now I also did also I also did my own wrap for the handle as you guys can see there and it kind of allows you to put your hand through there with a little bit of work there and so now you can literally let go of the knife and it is pretty t permanently attached to my hand so pretty good uh, I, so pretty good lanyard, I definitely like it. And uh, okay guys, so hopefully you enjoyed this basic list of apocalypse blades. Like I said, some are less practical than others. I think this one would actually be a pretty good apocalypse blade, but uh, you know, some are a little bit less realistic than others, but they all kind of fit the same motif of being really capable multi-role knives that whether it's self-defense, whether it's material or resource gathering, they would help you out a lot. And I think that that's the general idea or just of all of these knives. Of course, some lean more to tactical, some lean more to resource gathering and bushcrafting or outdoors. Um, but generally, I think all of them could be pushed into both in a pinch. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.